Hello, church family. Uh, it's really good to be in your home again. And uh, today's message is taken from a book by Warren Worsby. Um, at least the thoughts that I started with on being a servant of God. That's the name of his book. And we'll be quoting several pieces out of that book. And I really encourage you to read that book. Um, it was a very uh, big inspiration to me. And uh, so let's begin. When we first started uh, our family, first started in the children's ministry here at Calvary Chapel, Hemet in 2021, I'm afraid I didn't have a clear vision of what Christ's work was all about. You know, consequently, uh, I was a bit frustrated uh, along the way and not knowing exactly what to do or how to evaluate what I was doing. Um, uh, Warren Wiersbe came up with the same uh, analogy in his early ministry, and it was comforting to me to, to hear that somebody else of that stature had the same struggle. I guess in many ways, I was trying to break it down into parts and analyze it. Being practical seemed uh, the right thing to do. It's, it's kind of the way I am and where I come from and how I was raised. Um, you know, uh, the reason uh, our family came to Calvary Chapel way back in 2010 was because we uh, remembered Chuck Smith and uh, when we were teenagers, we would go to the big tent there in Costa Mesa, and uh, both Lynn and I, we didn't know each other, but we would visit that uh, church, and we found great inspiration. Um, Chuck Smith just had a way of stirring up in us our first love for Christ. Even though we had a first love, it was an ongoing thing, and he would draw that out from us as young people on and on as we would visit the church. I want to go with a quote here from Warren Worsby out of that book on being a servant of God. Serving God is a wonderful thing if we understand what it is and how God does it through us. Now folks, here's the passage we're going to be uh, reading from today. It's out of John 15, 1 through 17. And we're all very familiar with that passage. Uh, uh, Jesus says, starting in verse 1, uh, to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he, can, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because the, of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. Jesus, by the way. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For what we, without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he casts out, he's, uh, is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them together and they throw them uh, in the fire and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire uh, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. It's all about relationship. We see that in, uh, in these first eight verses. Oh, and how desperately we need that in our lives, a relationship with Jesus. In verse 9, it go, uh, Jesus goes on to say, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Now, the topic begins to change, and you'll notice. 
the center focus, yes, it's about Jesus, but it's about the topic of love. We go on in verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. And we all want to have full joy. Jesus is telling us how. In verse 12, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man th than this, than he lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, Jesus says, if you do whatever I command you. So stop right here. We're seeing that he's giving us the topic of love, but he's now giving us a solid commandment. Let's read on. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. Again, a very close relationship here that we're reading about that Jesus wants with you and I. In verse 16, oh, uh, for all the things that I have heard from, this is just me, I'm, we're going off the uh, uh, verses here, but for all the things I have heard from my father, uh, I have made known to you. That's the latter part of verse 15. I repeat it because folks, we're not going to know God's uh, word just by reading it or studying it. We must have a relationship with Christ. I'm sorry to say, but I know a number of people in my life that have got many, many verses memorized. Whole sections. And myself, I, I was able to memorize whole books of the Bible. But something was missing. Just memorizing scripture and knowing God's word in a um, theological fashion and not having a relationship with Christ, there is not going to be a real connection in ministry. We read in verse 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that, you, that your fruit should remain, that, you, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Um, now pay close attention to this next verse. It really is, to me, I feel, a very key part of true ministry. Verse 17, command, these things I command you, Jesus says, that you love one another. Later, Worsby says in his book, no matter how difficult the work and how many times uh, we, uh, we feel like quitting, we can keep going and growing if we minister the way God tells us in his word. And we see this here as Jesus speaks to his disciples, as they are about to embark on their ministry here on earth. Again, Warren Worsby says, ministry takes place when divine resources and human needs through loving channels uh, to the glory of God. And he goes on to list four things, I'm closing here, four things that are necessary for this to happen. We must know the divine resource personally, have a relationship with Christ. See, two, see the human needs compassionately, and three, become, uh, become channels of God's mighty resources so that, four, God alone is glorified. I'm leaving you with another final quote from Warren Worsby. He says, I was on the ocean of life with a road map instead of a compass. He shared that about his early ministry days. My prayer is that you find your compass and that it leads you back to sweet fellowship with Jesus. God bless.